I mean, first of all, you know, we often work with them to try and um, actually package the deployment around some of the, the critical parts of their infrastructure, perhaps a couple of their, their key um, applications. Um, and then, you know, once you've done that and you can actually, you know, model your business application to see where they are and see all of the underlying interdependencies, the first benefit you get is around change impact and change impact analysis. And also perhaps change detection. Hmm. So things have changed in terms of the running configuration of your application. Did you know about that? Where did that come from? And that can help sort of prevent problems turning into incidents. Um, and, and then, so the second thing that, 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 that people get is they, now they have this picture, this baseline, they can start to um, build up that uh, management science that I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to actually uh, then work out where they'd like to be, whether that be for the reasons right. of you know, swapping out some particular hardware platform because of power utilization issues or space consumption in, in the data center, um, and, you know, and hence you know, helping uh, the carbon footprint of their, their company, in fact, right. um, or whether it be a migration in terms of software. Um, because there's a new OS platform and a new application server they want to move to. Um, and then again, if they're going down the virtualization route, that's another, another thing they're trying to track. Um, that again can help with, with the kind of the, the greening of the, the data center, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, there's some sort of very mundane, mundane things that spring to mind, um, like just ensuring that uh, you've got the correct monitoring agents and antivirus agents and the security agents and all of this deployed on all of the appropriate platforms. Right. So having that granularity of visibility, you know, readily and easily in your critical applications um, is something they can get within that, you know, very much in that, that, that first three month period. Okay. So JP, you know, there's been a lot of talk about actually understanding where your business applications are and the dependencies between them, but you know, in your opinion, in your view of the market, how far advanced is this in terms of actual adoption? Well, it, it's beginning to be adopted. It's the beginning of the curve. One mm -hmm. of the exercises that I, I went through was to create a logistics curve mm. of the market, taking, you know, since the market for application dependency mapping started in 2002, mm -hmm. you know, how many clients were uh, uh, acquired every year and, and uh, what is the projection. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my, I would say my estimate today is about 600, Okay. Okay. Around 600 organizations that have adopted mm. dependency mapping and started implementing it, um, going on to you know probably uh, uh, several thousand uh, at the end of the cycle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, several years from now, of course. So there's so there's a key question. I mean, in my experience, I, um, you know, I would agree something in that hundreds mark is probably um, where the market is currently. Certainly, in terms of those who've have um, uh, you know, uh, at least made the purchasing decision uh, and then have been working on, mm -hmm. on deployment. Um, uh, obviously those who are working with Tideway will have been able to get deployed very rapidly. And, and then, um, so I get, but it leads to another question which is um, clearly at the top end of the, you know, the large enterprises there are several thousand this is, this is very you know, clearly applicable to. Um, you know, what range in terms of size of organization and perhaps across different you know, vertical market, mm -hmm. uh, do you mm -hmm. think that application dependency mapping is you know, a, a key prerequisite for you know, good IT management? Well, there, there are today, I think about 35,000 enterprises with more than 1,000 servers. Yeah, well, so and that's interesting because from, from my experience, we, we, we've sold to several organizations and worked with several organizations with, with, with less than 1,000 oh, servers. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you go down, you know, I, I would say that at some point in time where the complexity of your infrastructure becomes unmanageable. Mm -hmm. And that, that can start very early. Sure. Okay. Uh, 300 servers, for example, mm -hmm. for uh, uh, an, an IT organization, a small insurance company or someone, someone like that, uh, is going to be reached very easily. Mm -hmm. Now, 300 servers means that there are probably a couple of thousand applications. Sure. Okay, that are spread on these servers, mm. of which maybe ten are, are very, very critical, sure. and and that probably nobody knows exactly where they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so back it, to the it's legacy. And uh, so absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I've seen organization with three hundred servers where actually there was zero monitoring, zero understanding of the distributed environment because uh, these servers had been a, a recent addition. Mm. They were used, which is very often the case in financial services. There is all the critical applications are on mainframes, mm. and then they start deploying, they start front-ending these mainframe applications with, 
you know, J2E or mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And, and of course, after a while, it's become so complex that nobody knows where it is. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, it's hair on fire, as you said. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Everybody's running around. And the businesses is losing its, uh, its patience or tolerance uh, for absolutely. that, as we've been saying.